Oh, we're going to go into the next section. Maybe we want to just go into our next section. So what we need to do is just solo this. And then we can get ready for the drop of our chorus. What is up gang and welcome back to another episode. Today I thought I'd look at arrangement techniques and there's some subtle things that we can do to create a nice full arrangement with plenty of narrative. Let's use the example of Shy Girl. Shy Girl is an artist from the UK with just over a million monthly listeners and some of her tracks have extremely simple arrangement techniques that are super super effective. It's not just Shy Girl that's utilizing these techniques, they can be seen across the entire pop landscape. We've got a lot to cover, let's dive into it. So this episode is, of course, sponsored by my friends DistroKid, and we'll have a little bit more about them later on in the video. Now, there was four clear sections that I could hear in Shy Girl's tracks. Let's take a listen, and then I'll explain after. So what this is highlighting to me is that there's four clear sections to the track, but they're all using pretty much the same idea. So the first idea starts like this. And once we've looped that idea a few times, we can move on to the next section. The next section is going to take influence from that first idea and it's going to embellish it a little bit before moving on to the chorus. The chorus is going to be way more full of arrangement techniques and compositional ideas, but it's still going to fall back onto that original motif. And then finally, we're probably going to have like a middle eight bridge section, which can be completely different, but we're going to manipulate that first idea to get there. Let's dive into what we've got. So what I've done with the first idea is essentially just started with this sound here. You don't always have to be a world-class sound designer to get a unique sound. All I did was find a sample that had a unique sound to it. And I thought, yeah, I'd like to use a one shot from that. So you can see in the sampler here, I've just cropped out one note, added OTT, Valhalla and RC20. Beforehand, it sounded like this. And then with a little bit of OTT, Valhalla and RC20 for a little bit of distortion, it sounds like this. And we're just gonna kind of loop that idea and add a little bit of vinyl crackle. This is a great introduction to the track and can get the listener used to kind of that repetitive motif. And then maybe the vocalist can layer up the first verse. From here, we can introduce the drums, which aren't gonna change. Very simple line. The hi-hats are just that kind of trappy feel. Utilizing the murder hat on a sample track. EQ, OTT, simple kick snare idea. They're going to stay there throughout the rest of this tutorial. With the noise, I'm just going to deaden it a little bit because we don't actually want it in the chorus effect. So now the noise sounds like this. Before, after. And the same goes for kind of deadening the original motif idea. Just a little bit of EQ8 at the end so it becomes a little bit more dull. Before, after. Now we can introduce a new instrument as well. With this, I'm just using the cashmere pan flute sound from Serum. With Shy Girl's track Schlut, I was noticing that there was a little bit of pitch bent, so I've done that in the envelope. Here are my MIDI notes, and then just towards the end of the last note, I've got a slight pitch bend. When I play that idea the second time, I don't have the pitch bend and instead just play the two notes. It gives a little bit of differentiation to the loop. All right, so hopefully you're still with me. As we go into the next section, it becomes a little bit more complex. Drum line, remember, stays the same. I didn't want that vinyl sound, so instead I've swapped it for some white noise and really constricted that EQ sound. Before, after. But now we move down to the Ample Sound guitar. It's still playing a similar motif to what we had in the introduction. Dum 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 da da with an up and down kind of feel, but we're just expanding on that idea just a little bit, having some notes that kind of fill in the blanks. This is the Ample Guitar Luther. Underneath, I tried to make the guitar sound a little bit fuller, which sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
And that probably sounds really busy and you wonder what I'm doing there. So at first I duplicated that original guitar track, selected all the notes, and you can't just copy and paste notes and octaves. So I copied these notes up one semitone and then shift command up and then just down one semitone. So now they're completely an octave apart, but I want them to be a little bit more busy. So I'm adding the arpeggiator set to 16th notes. That's now gonna make it sound like I'm kind of plucking it at a rate of 16th. From there, I just changed the EQ, added a line delay so it was wider, multiband dynamics, so I pulled out some of that bright fret noise, and then echo, just to give it, again, a little bit of width and a little bit of movement. So add those guitars together. I, of course, turned that second guitar way down. Now, it wouldn't have made sense for the bass to be as busy as that guitar, so you can see that I've muted some of the notes. I'm using some of the lowest notes to just create a really simple bass line. That's just the basic sub sign from operator. And underneath I have the sign like bass, which is playing a lower sub frequency. And that's it from the chorus section. Now from here, you're probably gonna wanna go into like a bridge. Now, as you can see here, I've pitched down some of the clips that I had from the original flute idea from the second part of the introduction. I've rearranged that and then drawn a bass line around that idea to create this kind of middle eight fill. So the flute on its own sounds like this. You can see that I'm using automation on the EQ8 there to give it a little bit more movement. And then, as I said, I drew the bass line around that pattern, but I'm switching up the bass for a respace. This works really well because it gives that idea of change for the bridge, but it goes really easily back into the introduction. Check this out. Cool, we're going to the next section. Maybe we want to just go into our next section. So what we need to do is just solo this. And then we can get ready for the drop of our chorus. Obviously you would tidy this track up with noise transitions and take the drums out, replace them, add percussion, things like that. But when you work on just four main sections of an arrangement, start with a motif, expand on that motif, utilize the ideas from that motif to color in the composition and then remix that so you get your bridge. I'm sure that you're gonna be able to flesh out a song in no time. I hope this video was helpful, guys. Let me know what you wanna see in future videos in the comments. As always, this project and others like it are available at the Patreon. I'm also working on a very special rack for you guys, so make sure you get over there to get an exclusive deal. This video was, of course, sponsored by DistroKid, which is how I release all of my music. They have loads of promotional tools. You can get your music on over 200 platforms. They've got things like Mixia, which helps you master your track. I also make sure that I utilize their Canvas tools and things like promo cards when my track finally gets released so people can find it and there's lovely visuals to choose from. If you want to join me on DistroKid, make sure you use the link in the description below as you'll get 7% off your first year. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys, and I'll see you next time.